Well, Absolutely. Oh! <laughs> Put it in the highlight video. <laughs> I was about to shake your another wine 101 for you. We're going to taste Chardonnay from around the world. We're going to start with some new world examples and then finish with a bit of a cult producer from um, probably the king of regions for, Bur- uh, for Chardonnay, Burgundy. The home, the greatest. Yeah. I'm really excited. Well, let's kick things off local. We're going to go to the Piccadilly Valley in Adelaide Hills. Lovely. Yeah. Where in the Adelaide Hills is the Piccadilly Valley? So it falls between Summertown and Stirling. Cool, okay. cool. Yeah. Oh wow! So like, r- that's really specific. Yeah. Like, oh, thank, thanks so much, Henry. Like, you're so kind thinking of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's like I'm just gonna get straight into the wine books. I wouldn't have done that because I'm an asshole. So, do you know much about Chiron? I know a little bit. I know he worked at the Lane. I think he still works. At the I think lane. he still works he at the still Lane. He still works at the Lane and has his own little side project um, with his wife. Um, they make a couple other little kind of classic varieties from Adelaide Hills. Yeah, uh, they recently won like a South Australian wine show, the Hot 100, the last one I think they did. Yeah, 2019. 2019, yeah, he took yeah. that out with this Pinot Noir, so it's good to see the other side of the coin with the Chardonnay. 100%. Let's taste it. Absolutely. Sweet. Well, we all we also know that Henry's a big Chardonnay fan, and by big fan, he thinks everything's Chardonnay. I do think everything is Chardonnay. <laughs> this is Chardonnay. This is, <laughs> the, like, you memorize this smell. Oh, that's fucking Chardonnay. Yeah, but that's but, what I think they all smell like. like. Sorry, that's what I think they all smell like. I, I had well, a wine glass. There's a pretty me. liberal use of some quality oak here. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a mix of new and old. Yeah. So when we're tasting through these, we're doing different price points as well. Aren't yeah, we? so I should also mention that as well. So um, we're going to go up in price as we continue to taste. So this one is about $35. It's $32. We yeah, $32. purchased from East End Sellers just down the road. That was 32 bucks retail. Yeah. Which in yen is... <laughs> uh, 300, uh, 3,900. Oh. I think. Okay. No, 390. 390 yen. Shockingly serious. Historical that you took that. yen I'm, very yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's like, uh, like 10 bucks Australia is 110 in yen. Can't wait to see this in the post when you've either got it very right or very wrong. Yeah, I bet Lockie's going to cut to like the live song exchange (laughs) right now. (laughs) Something like that. Alrighty. Um, Really, I I actually really like this. For $32, this is a great shot. Like it's amazing that like that oak is really well integrated. Like it's got this pure, like really briochey, almondy, vanilla-y character, but it's, it's still fruit forward and like delightful and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think also as well, like there's some nice complexity in the palette. You're getting like, you know, toastier characteristics in the palette. And the other thing I really like about this is this nice kind of like lactic y kind of thing happening. I think. Do you get that? Yeah. Uh, Brioche is something that, like, you've just mentioned that is a really interesting way of talking about it. Yeah. Because Mm. as someone who isn't used to tasting wines, when you taste something like that, you don't instantly pop to, oh, that tastes like a sweet. Uh, hamburger roll, but that does kind of taste like a sweet hamburger. Yeah, because roll. it finishes dry, but you smell it, and it smells like those. It like if you've ever been to bread yeah. top or something like that, or anywhere that sells like really good quality milk buns, you're just like, holy totally. shit! It smells exactly like that. But what's great about this is that when you try a wines that have a decent amount of oak in them, or particularly new oak, they can feel quite flabby and rich and dense. Whereas this finishes like really chalky, dry, and dry, and like. It's it's a great great acid line, yeah. That drive through the middle is fantastic because that's that integration of new and old, old totally. at the same time. And for thirty two dollars, this is an absolute steal. Yeah. Do you get that kind of like yogurty tartness? Yes, on the way out, especially yeah. like yeah. the last thing that you've got on that on your palate is yeah similar to yeah you're having um you're having like muesli in the morning. You put yeah. some Greek yogurt on top. Totally. And it's that sort of same thing on the way out of your yeah. palate. Yeah, it's delicious. It's so a really well put wine? together wine. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Put it on that. your muesli. For thirty-two dollars, sure. For thirty-two bucks, like, jeez, we've come out strong. So I think this is a really good example of um, entry-level Chardonnay in Australia, particularly from the Adelaide Hills. Is there? Also, <laughs> Piccadilly was where the Adelaide Hills region really started. It was yeah, when totally. In Brian Crozer planted a whole bunch of Pinot and Chardonnay, I think, in the early '80s yeah. to make a whole bunch of sparkling. So as it's got warmer, I think those varieties have now started to lend themselves to still wines, um, which I think a lot of people like uh, Stephen George, particularly Ashton Hills, picked up early 
early on in the piece. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's high altitude. It's like 600 meters above sea level. High altitude for South Australia. High altitude for just Australia, I guess, in general. Mm. Um, but yeah, 600 meters above sea level, it generally gets a, a decent amount of moisture. It's nice and foggy. It doesn't get too ridiculously warm. And then a lot of south facing slopes that don't get too much of the sun. 100%. Where are we going next? We're going to head over to New Zealand. I actually really love this producer. So they are. Um... Yeah, tip it in there. Uh, tip it in there. <laughs> you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, you'll be all right. There we go. Thank you. All God. right, we're going to head over to um, New Zealand. So. Thank you. So, where's this from in New Zealand? So, Northern Canterbury. Well, this is interesting because it's got there's a lot less filtration in comparison to the first. So, uh, Pyramid Valley, actually biodynamic juices. Sick. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, and Northern Canterbury, you go, go on. Really quickly, uh, this is also a test for me. When you say biodynamic, does yeah. that mean that the grapes that are being used for this wine are essentially, it's like its own little ecosystem, like there's no outside additives? Is that biodynamic winemaking? Yes and no. Shit. It basically means they follow the uh, Rudolf Steiner principles of um, farming. Okay. Yeah. So it's taking into account um, like soil quality, moon cycles, and then also trying to get um, kind of good um, nutrients and kind of activity in the soil. Yeah, manure like fed to the soil through um, like cow like cow, cow horns, horns and stuff like that. Like it's pretty intense. I reckon we could definitely do a one It's a little bit. It woo-woo. sounds like a one Some of it Sorry. is a bit woo woo. I've absolutely distracted you. It, it, it Let's is. Let's go back to normal. Like break. the best way to describe biodynamics really succinctly, it's like it's half mumbo jumbo, half absolutely essential, yeah, great 100%. organic farming principles. Not like knocking um, biodynamics, like but footy yeah. tipping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing sure. us down to earth. <laughs> now uh, you all understand. So, where, all right. where's where's Northern Canterbury as so far as Northern Canterbury, South Island, and then on the east side, and there's three subregions. So this is from the northern subregion, yep. um, Waipara. Uh, Pyramid Valley also has vineyards in Central Otago, so a little bit further south, closer to Queenstown. So, um, but this feels a little bit more restrained on the oak front, but a 100%. lot more lees work. And I think this really speaks really well to the malleability of Chardonnay. Yep. Like you, it's such a winemaker's great where you can do a lot to it. You can like, well, that's this is more focused on oak integration. This is a little bit more focused on texture and batonage and all that kind of thing. I think as well for me, like this is like a really worked Chardonnay, hundred yeah. percent. Um, whereas this for me really screams of its place. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's really interesting. You don't have too many Tasmanian Chardonnays regularly. Isn't this New Zealand? Sorry, New Zealand Chardonnay. Yeah. Another island. That we Another don't island off the mainland of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Another island that doesn't have an AFL team. Again, always yeah. footy. I'm sorry, it's final yeah. season. <laughs> the acid is actually doesn't seem as intense as the Turon. No. Like it's more held into balance, I think, with the fruit. But I the fruit isn't as like forward, I would say, as the Adelaide Hills. No, but there's a lot more texture. Yeah. It's a lot more layered. And probably like, whereas this one has peaks and valleys, I guess, where it's like spiky oak use, spiky acidity, but like the fruit kind of sits away and the texture's a little bit out of out of balance. Mm. Whereas this one feels like really linear and clean. And it's like smooth. I, I think that's got like more drinkability to it. I think yeah. that this has got more complex flavors. Yeah. If I was going to have- This has uh, got more complexity. This yeah, has got more sure. complexity, yeah. sorry, than this one. Yeah. I think it's a more interesting wine, but in terms of pure drinkability, as someone who doesn't, I'm not like a huge appreciator of mm. different textured white wines mm. yet. I'm getting there. Like it's yeah, happening with all these with sorts time. of different things. But in terms of pure drinkability, I find that a little bit less intense and potentially a little well, bit more enjoyable. Honestly, so far, like both of these wines really speak good. so truly of their price bracket. And like yeah. if you spent the amount of money that you spend on these wines, you'd be absolutely wrapped because both of them yeah. are fantastic. And it's cool to see New Zealand Chardonnay because you don't exactly. think about it all that much. It's spectacular. No, we don't actually get many New Zealand wines over in Australia. Um, we do and get internationally that, beyond New Zealand, of course, yeah. as well. What's yeah. what's that one? Um, what, Blanc, yeah, Marlborough. Marlborough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Central Otago. Oh, it's the Bay, baby. I think Chardonnay mm. is definitely kind of overlooked. New From New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, and yeah. I think actually in um, Northern Canterbury, it's out of like their key varieties, it's the lowest plantings in this particular region. Going back to where Chardonnay came from, we're going to Burgundy. Going to Burgundy. And luckily for us, we've got a pretty reasonably priced one. Um, I don't know much about this producer actually at all. So he's a bit of a wine boy wonder. He actually started wine school when he was 13 years old. 
He was then head of that a major. Be legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, sorry, you obviously don't know the answer to these questions, but why? Like, what on so, earth could compel a third? Sorry. So this, so this is ben- Benjamin Larue. Yeah, Benjamin Larue. Cool. Yeah, and then he was head of a major um, at Bordeaux. Oh, Bordeaux. Burgundy, Burgundy. wine house. It begins with Bay. By the time he's 26, fancy. which is really unheard of. Most of That's the crazy. head winemakers are in the 30s, 40s, 50s. If that, yeah. yeah. So that means that it's potentially 13 years before I can become a head winemaker in the Bord- Burgundy region. I mean, did you start wine school when you were 13? No, but I, he started when he's he was currently 13. Started. He's 26. So if I started at 26, mm. I could be 39. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. I don't it, think it's going to happen. In, no. this, in this context, yeah. I should be there right now. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, so no. definitely one of the more recognised producers, kind of a cult um, winemaker. He... I've got, a really, I've got a really hot take about what this smells like. Yeah, Go for it. Watery tomato sauce. Oh my God, you're so right. <laughs> it is like that apple cider vinegary kind of sprightly acidity, but matched with this really kind of like silky soft like handling of Green oak. tomatoes maybe. Yeah, green tomato, uh, tomato water. You haven't shaken the sauce bottle. You've put it on your pie. That's the first little it's the ink, liquid, the, the, the colourless liquid. That's what makes sense, like, with the oak use in this. It's a mix of old and new oak. I think, like, 10% new oak. Oh, cool. So then that's spice. Um, yeah, interesting. I totally I understand that, where you're coming I from. I think that Heinz actually uses that same 10% new oak, 90% old oak with their tomato sauce recipe, so that does make a lot of sense. Hey, you guys are the Soms. I'm the tomato sauce boy here, so don't at me. Tom sauce. I was this close to spitting my wine out at you. I'm a tomillier. <laughs> <Tumilier. laughs> so, so this is Begonia. Yeah. So Begonia is like a blend of villages across yeah. the whole Burgundy region. Exactly. So ha- what, what happens when you go to the next step up? Yeah, so then you're, um, you're getting fruit from uh, one particular village. So it's a village wine. Mm-hmm. And then once you, um, within the particular AOC, then once you're getting particular vineyards within a particular village, you're moving up higher in like the AOC system. Yeah. So this is like a blend. This is like a regional blend. Regional basically. blend. And then you get to a, the then particular get, region blend. Yeah. And then, so you can town, go to, and then it goes down to like specific vineyard rankings. Yeah. Okay. And then rows in a vineyard essentially as well. Wow. So Barossa, Tananda, Tananda Vineyard this. Oh, but no, he, he's, like, he's the way to go. So it's like, like... Okay, so it's Barossa. Yep. It's... um, It is... Eden Valley. Eden Valley. And then... Or Barossa Flat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a... Hill, Hill of, of Grace, Grace Vineyard, yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. a particular place that has been ranked as the best example of... Like hand-selected by the regional government. So saying Gurus. this is the yeah. best vineyard in this particular region. You can call it Grand Cru. Hey, your vineyard's really good, but it's not quite that good. That's Premier Crew. And then you've got, um, hey, this village is fucking great. We can call it Villages. Villages, or like to give an example of like Puifus or Merso or something like that. Whereas this is a blend of a whole bunch of different villages all across the region of Burgundy. So it's yeah. basically getting some fruit from Kaipo, Piccadilly, or, and Gumaraka and putting it together. So is the. This is completely from left field, this question. I don't expect either of you to know the answer, but you might. You know the hype about single origin coffee? Yeah. Is that because everyone who's a wine wanker also loves coffee and that's where that hype has come from? Well, Absolutely. I think- oh! <laughs> Put it in the highlight video. I was about to shake your hands. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was just like, I'm getting the fuck you. out of here. Ah. I, I tell you what, though, Mark Wall would be envious of one of the, that. Nah, you that know what that pretty is. good. You know what that is. I apologise. I actually got a Pfizer vaccine today, and one of the side effects is spilling wine glasses. So I apologise. Also, get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. That's, going back to your question. Going back to my question. <laughs> I think the thing, um, I think wine has opened the door to so many um, different producers to really think about um, the origins of their products, whether yep. it's chocolate or mm. coffee, you know, and there's a whole other branch of products. But the main thing is, is like if you're tasting a blend, are you really tasting a particular region? And like, you know, otherwise, are you just trying? Are you just drinking? You know, like this, for example, would be a really good example of like a blend, say, because you're getting 
bits and pieces to make a really beautiful wine. It might be the same for coffee. I'll take a bit from Costa Rica, I take a bit from here. And this coffee yeah. is like really drinkable. Interesting. Yeah. And that's what you generally get with like your, your house coffee. Um, and all that kind of thing. It's like you literally make an espresso, mix it with milk. This is your drinkable coffee. And I guess this is the same example with this wine. It's like this is your everyday mm. drinking wine. Even though it's $75 in Australia, for a lot of people, that <laughs> Daily is. Daily driver. Yeah. For a lot of people, that is a lot of money. But if you think about Burgundy, this is actually pretty great value. It's really great value. And it's really delicious. I think it's, it's super tasty wine. One thing I found as we've gone along, even though 2019, not a great year for, uh, for Burgundy. No. Um. We've kind of gone down in fruit. Yeah, exactly. It's we've a, really leveled down every single wine we've had. Great kind of crystallized acidity that kind of runs through is like a nice salty thing. Probably yeah. like this has got those like super ancient complex soils, calcareous probably in portions of it. Mm. Like, you know, we can get into Kim that Kimerigian is it? Kimerigian, thank you. Which yeah. is probably why, in my opinion, my if I was to rank these wines, I'd go one, two, three. Wow. Wow. Okay. There I, is um, something really lovely and mineral about this wine as well, which we haven't seen in any of the other wines. Yes. I agree, yeah. This is this is the thing about Australia. I think it's a lot of the time it's really hot and we get a lot of ripe fruit characteristics. And even though Piccadilly is considered a cool climate region, it's still pretty warm. And particularly this was, is this 2020? Yeah. So 2020 was I, we had heaps of bushfires throughout Adelaide Hills. Of course, it was extremely hot. So this is quite ripe. It'd be interesting to see, to see this next to a 2021, which is a little bit more moderate. Lots of rain. Yeah. Um, uh, it's going to go down as one of the great vintages in Australia. So it'd be really interesting to see this side by side with something similar. Um, I don't know anything about the 2019 vintage in, uh, do I, but in New Zealand. But it's looking really smart. That one. But it's, it's a fantastic yeah. wine. So I hope it was pretty good. It's not tasting. It's looking really smart. He's learning. <laughs> He's learning. Um, but it's it's pretty hard to go past something like this when it's just like that perfectly balanced and yeah. just so well crafted. I can't get past this smelling like tomato sauce. <laughs> like, it tastes fantastic. You, you always know how to bring it down to peg and just like bring us back to the oh, every man. I'm not bringing us up to the elite Maybe classes. Maybe because of that like vinegar. Yeah, I get that vinegary kind yeah, of thing. It's yeah. kind of apple cidery, apple, you know? Yeah. But it, I, I think it actually adds complexity to wine and it lifts the acidity it's of it as well. It kind of smells a bit slaty as well. Mm, for sure. Yeah, it's it's, it's a perfect example of literally you sp the more money you spend with Chardonnay, yeah. the better it gets, yeah. quite likely. The more, in I think the more interesting it gets is a probably a, is how I would phrase it. Like I, I, agree. I agree with you because you obviously understand what you're drinking here a lot yeah. more than I do. This is boring. But very drinkable. Bore, yeah, boring's harsh, but I understand where you're coming from. Uh, yeah. When you're comparing it to the other three, uh, the other complex. two wines, yeah. there, it's the least complex of the yeah. three. Incredibly drinkable. As you move up the scale, I don't dislike either of these two wines, but I'm literally thinking about if I'm sitting at home, which one of these am I going to find? I don't know. The, the, the most that I'm sitting on the couch, I'm like, man, I'm really thirsty. I'd like a glass of that. That's probably this one. These ones are very cool, though. They're very different. They display different They're things. Great. And sitting here talking... They're the sort of wines that you want to drink when someone understands the wine that you're drinking because you want someone to be able to sit there and be like, here's what this is, here's why it's cool, here's why it's interesting, which is, I don't know, part of the fun part, part about wine. No, but yeah. I, but I tell you, drink super dry all the but time. But I tell you what, if I had, if like probably most of the days of the week, I'd be grabbing a bottle of that and I'd be stoked. Okay, mm. so 30, 50, 75. Yeah. You've got... Uh, $150 to spend. Mm. What are you getting? Oh. Oh. Well, this, that's literally what happened when we bought these. <laughs> like we said, 150 bucks. This is what we have to buy. So would you get 275s? Or would you go the 30s? Build your ultimate wine line. I reckon, I reckon honestly, for me, for yeah. me, I would either grab three of these, the same three thing. of these, or jump the level of that to something that's a bit more How like a nine. 150. 150. Let's say that you've got, so this is worth one, this is worth two, that's worth three, and yeah. you've got six. But if you've never tried Burgundy before, this is a yeah. perfect way to start. Yeah, and you I agree. Absolutely do that. I think I'd honestly go, yeah, same. I'm going to go with Noah. I think I'd get three of um, New Zealand. Okay, I think it's just interesting Zealand, yeah. as well. And like the other thing is as well is that with is so Burgundy, I think you can easily uh, be probably shamed, but you know, we're not drinking like a single vineyard or a premier crew or even a grand crew. Whereas yeah. New Zealand, Chardonnay seems really underrated and it's, it's kind extremely of underrated. Like, like at, at this, like you can yeah. get this is as good a price as anything from Australia of its ilk and at the same price point. 100%. 100%. You bring that to a dinner party, people are going to be really interested. Bring this to a dinner party, they'll be like, oh, you couldn't splurge and get single vineyard. Oh, <laughs> so this is 
<laughs> so Man, I'm coming to your dinner party. <laughs> so that's the worst house on the best street. Pretty much. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's a yeah. really good. That's a that's yeah. a really good kind of everyman. That's a yeah. hot everyman tag. Yeah, yeah but but that's the best real estate because you can renovate it. Exactly, and hopefully one day. <laughs> not, a punch. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a good punch. analogy. It's, it's not a good not. analogy. Yeah, you can't a, it, renovate that to be premier. premier. No, yeah. but the it's idea of a hotel of, chain, yeah. like in a particular place. Yeah. The idea of trying to flex with that is like, well, if you're trying to flex, flex. But if you're trying to get a good example of a region, get something that is a worse region, but you can get a okay. good example. Exactly, and worse comparatively, maybe historically. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, yeah. I, I feel like there's no winemaker watching this being like, man, Henry thought I was worse. No, no. <laughs> no but you're right, you're right. You are absolutely no, right. I'm just like... I think this has honestly been one of the more interesting conversations that I've had. Like, talking about the same grape variety from three different places and figuring out why they are worth the money that they're yeah. worth. Like. That probably has more of a regional price tag on it than something like this. This is trying to yeah. be more like that. It's, it's cool. Wine's cool. Wine, That's wine. the summary. I like yeah. wine. Yeah. As it turns like, out. I, get, I guess the best way to finish up is like this is a craving. If you crave like a like a bottle of Chardonnay at the end of the day, mm. grab this for thirty bucks. You won't go wrong. If you yeah. want to get something that's really interesting at a good price, this is fantastic. If you've not tried Burgundy before and you want a great entry to that. Grab the um, Benjamin Larue. Really well Bogondi. said. 100%. Really well said. That's fun. But if you spend twice as much as that, you'll have a great time. Next video. Money. We need the boss to be here to spend that sort of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should be mad he missed out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Josh. Awesome. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye. Bye.